في هذه الجلسة دكتور ورزي بعض Good morning everybody. Uh, I would like first to express my happiness for being here um, in my second home country, Libya, and in Benghazi, and in Limon, and especially. Um, if we begin with integration, both community-based education and problem-based learning are acting on integration and are both the best examples of implementing integration in medical curriculum. Because when we say community-based education, we can say anatomy-based education or surgery-based education or histology-based education, it's community-based education. So it, it, it integrates all the medical disciplines together in one strategy. And when we say community, we hear stress on the importance of health versus disease because it's not a patient-centered strategy. It's a health-based strategy because we allow our students to be in contact with the community as a whole unit, including its health and disease. So this is another concept here, is that when we say community-based education, we're talking about health, not about disease. The third concept that community-based education and problem-based learning are sharing is the relevance. The relevance to the community health needs and priority health problems in both education strategies they focus very much on what's relevant to the health needs and priority health problems of the same community. Okay? So by the end uh, of this very short talk, we will be able to know in community-based education the what, the why, the who, the how, the where, and when we apply community-based education. But first, in the what? What is community-based education? Because there are very close um, terminologies that usually confuse most of the medical educations. What's called community-based education, which is the title of our talk today, and community-oriented education. I wonder if, if any of you, because this, this and I, I tend to make this lecture actually not a traditional lecture, but an interactive talk. So if any of you know the difference or expect the difference between community-oriented and community-based education, she or he is welcome to uh, participate in this discussion. I'm sure that we hear a lot about both terminologies, right? Community-oriented education, and most actually of the institutions in the world claim that they are community-oriented. Some claim that they are community-based as well. Have you ever thought of the difference between both? Community-oriented do we include the stakeholders? Yes. Yeah. Go on, please. Yeah, may include stakeholders in in uh, choosing or defining some items in the curriculum or developing the curriculum. Ma'am, you say no. Why you say no? I think 
in both. So, one basic important thing in comparison. When you compare two things, you don't pick up the shared things because this will not be a comparison. In both cases, of course, we will rely on the stakeholders. But could you pick up one difference even in, in the wording? Community-oriented, community-based education. Based. So, what do you think the community-based education would be all about? Because it's related to the idea with, with, with Infrastructure, infrastructure using the community. Excellent. 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 He, he picked up the word beast and used his intelligence to expect that the learning process usually is based right in the community, outside the walls of the educational institution. Then, what about the community-oriented education, sir? Could you use, again, your intelligence to expect? Excellent, again. Excellent, again. So, in community-oriented education, we rely on the community health needs and priority health problems in planning our curriculum. But this doesn't mean that we should send our students outside the institution to learn within the community. It's a huge difference. And when this subject is brought up again in front of you, now you know the difference. Because any institution in the world who have relevance of their curriculum to the health needs of their community and priority health problems, they can claim that they are community-oriented institution. LEMO is community-oriented institution, but not yet community-based education because there are some requirements that should be done to define yourself as a community-based school. That we will know during the very short session. Okay? So, now we know this uh, confusion. We solved this problem. Community-oriented education is a medical education that takes into consideration what the priority health problems and health needs of the country in which it is conveyed in planning its curriculum. But the community-based education is a form of experiential learning or education about facilitation of learning in, as we said, with, with the community, and for, for the community, because we're doing, we are training doctors for the community. So we have to listen with our students to what the community has to say. Because we're doing all that for the community. And from the community. The students learn through serving the community. The students learn through serving the community. So we are all learning from the community. And this is the most updated definition, actually, in a book that I brought here from the public show. Here, as you can say, as you can see, we included in the definition the social responsibility and social accountability. So again, does any of you 
in an idea about a terminology that usually is inserted in the mission of the school when any school apply for accreditation, they very easily say, Dr. Said, that we are socially accountable. What does this mean, to be socially accountable? What do you think? This is a very important terminology that when accreditation will happen in this country formally, I'm sure that this issue will be very soon addressed at a national level. So what do you think when you say, I'm as a school, is socially accountable to my community? What does this mean? Any idea? Okay, because I'm scheduled for just 25 minutes, so I don't have the luxury of waiting for the answers, so I will satisfy your curiosity now. We have different levels in the social accountability. We begin with being socially responsible. This is the first level that you can provide your community with, is to say that I am responsible. What we mean by being socially responsible, a school which is committed to the welfare of the society. And usually it's a lip service. You say, I'm, I'm committed, okay? You are committed. And the community will never know that you are committed. And you don't make any real steps to show this sort of commitment to your community. So the community stay there, and you, you stay in your ivory tower without having this kind of relationship that represents your responsibility to the community. So this is the first level. And usually it doesn't work, believe me. The second level is being socially responsible. A school which directs its education, research, and health services towards the health need of the community. So whenever the community contacts you, you already are directing your, all your duties, because all these are duties for any school, any medical school, and any faculty in the school, education, service, and research. So you direct all this with relevance to the health needs of, of the community and priorities and problems. So if something happens in your community, you are ready. But you're not proactive in showing your community your availability and that you yourself are concerned with the community health needs and you go to them proactively. You know the word proactive, that you don't wait until they come to you to complain or to ask your help, but you go to them actively and uh, with your students to make what we call community diagnosis to find the real needs and priority health problems and actively to help them. This is the third and most important level which we call social accountability. So you never put this term in your mission without being really socially accountable. Because when to have a mission, you have to be mission sensitive in everything you do in your school. So at the time of accreditation, if they find that you put in your mission that you are socially accountable without being really socially accountable, this would be a problem in accreditation. Okay? 
So now we all know the difference between community-oriented and community-based education. Community-oriented is about the community, okay? But community-based education refers to the learning activities that takes place in the community. So community-oriented is about, but community-based is in the community itself. The why. Why we should implement, for instance, here in this school, we are problem-based learning. Should we think of being problem-based? So let's now discuss the why. Why we should adopt and implement community-based education. Because it breaks the barriers between the students and the public. This picture is from Bangladesh. See, the students are going in the rural areas to find and to witness by their own eyes the health status of the community. And see where they are walking right in the field. So it breaks the barrier between the students, the community, and their environment. You can't just uh, after graduation, shock them and shock the community by introducing your graduates to the community and they never know each other. A good means for the students to acquire attitude. All curricula are about three main things. We call them domains in the taxonomy of educational objectives, if you heard about it. Knowledge, skills, and attitude. We all focus very much on knowledge, to some extent on <coughs> skills, but we never talk about attitude. In community-based education, attitude is probably is the most important in the three things. Because we just we let our students to be in contact with the community and we, we, we always say early exposure of the students from day one <coughs> in the curriculum to the community. Okay? So they learn how to communicate with the community, what kind of attitude they should acquire to be able to handle this very early in their curriculum. This is in South Africa. See how a student is very passionate to a, handi to a handicapped uh, uh, old woman? This is from Swiss Canada University. Uh, it enables the students to obtain a clear idea about the real needs and health problems because when you address <coughs> the needs and, and problems, you should not do it as faculty by yourself here. The community knows better than you what kind of health troubles, health needs, and health problems they are having. You have to listen to what the community has to say, and you, ha you have to include all this during the, the, the process of identification of health needs and prioritization of health problems. So the students and faculty, as you see, they sit with the people themselves to uh, uh, try to identify the health needs together and to prioritize the health problems. This is in Pakistan. See? Uh, so it's a chance to change the theoretical knowledge that we teach the students to what really happens in the reality. So when we talk about the sewage system and its effect on the health and so on, we allow our students to witness by their own eyes what's happening. It gives the students a sense of social responsibility, we said that. Keep educational process up to date, dynamic curriculum, because when we contact the community, we discover What's new in the health map of today? Because sometimes the books and literature are dating back decades 
and, and sometimes we read from books that are 50 years old. Produce community-oriented doctors who are willing to serve their communities because we build up the trust and care between the students and the community members. A powerful means of improving the quality of community health service. I remember that when we were using the uh, primary health care facilities that belong to the Ministry of Health, so to prepare these as, uh, uh, as an educational sites for our students, we have to improve these facilities to measure up uh, and being uh, educational sites. So the community benefits from, from such collaboration between the university and the Ministry of Health. This is from Brazil. As you can see, when they use some primary health care facilities for educational use, how beautiful now it looks and uh, 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 how more beneficial it was when it, it was used as primary health care units for both the communities to improve health of the communities and to be uh, part of the educational sites. Competencies. Community-based education is one of the best examples when you implement competency-based education and this search for a strategy to represent uh, uh, this strategy. Uh, Community-based education focus on certain competencies that are different from the other competencies that every traditional school use. Like what? Public health, prevention of disease and promotion of health. If any of you belong to a traditional school, tell me how the undergraduate student will be skillful and the uh, prevention of disease and, and especially promotion of health compared to a student in a community-based school where these two items are two important items in the learning process of the students of community-based education. How to improve health and how to prevent disease from happening in the first place. Uh, cultural competence, leadership and management, students, when they go together as a team, they have to identify one team leader within the group to be able to go, to go together to the community. So they learn the leadership and management as a competency during their learning process. Community development and advocacy, research and evidence-based practice. Students in community-based education start very early research work within the community. And they start with community diagnosis very early, but then they start intervention in the later phases, and they are uh, um, start their student projects and when they finish it they come back to the school with the community informal leaders invited to discuss these research, uh, the research projects in their own school. In addition to the generic competences that every school is doing, communication, problem solving, decision making, facilitation, professionalism, and so on. To have a community-based school, there are some key principles. You have to, to build up strong ties between the partners. Who are the partners? The university, the community, and the government. Because here, you don't have a university hospital. And you have to have a strong relation with the government in the form of the Ministry of Health. Sign agreements with the Ministry of Health, and this is very important. 
you can just rely on the mutual trust between you and the Ministry of Health. If, if you send your students to be trained in the health facilities, then you have to uh, write agreements uh, uh, between you and the Ministry of Health. Empower the community. And I'll stop here for a second. Empower the community. How do you think we can empower the community? <coughs> what levels do you think if we decide here in Demo to empower our community? What levels do you expect that will happen naturally until we reach the very mature stage? Any clue? Any idea? Hmm? Educate the community as part of uh, this is very important because you know in the WHO you will find something called functional literacy. Functional literacy. If you are having uh, an issue of illiterate people in your community, you can help them be educated and you give them some health education. Uh, uh, within this form of education as the university. Can, and you have to involve with you... Yeah, okay. Can, can we create a standard basis, a uh, model, for a, okay. a standardized operation uh, to act as a base to be useful either for the uh, public or for the private university? I create a small uh, standard units. Okay, so let me give you the levels and you fill in. You agree? If the first level is, they call it mobilization of the community, to mobilize your community, what should you do to mobilize your community? Get everybody involved. Get everyone sharing is caring. Good. What else? Use the resources. Use the resources. Good. What else? <coughs> Dr. Sadi, <coughs> you start <laughs> now. Give me a minute. Amal tatawaiya latullah. Good. What else? Yes? Involve them in the decision making of the government. Involve, sharing is caring again. Involve them in the decision making. Okay. So, you go to your local community, you introduce yourself, you try to become closer to them, you choose the informal leaders rather than the formal leaders, the political ones. You use the informal leaders because the informal leaders of the community are the keys to the community outdoors, not the formal ones. So you, you, you go in an informal way and you start to build up a relationship between you and the community. The second level is the participation. But before you ask your community to participate with you in health promotion, you have to empower them first. And there are some ways of community empowerment. We can tell you about that later. There are some techniques. <coughs> but suppose you succeeded to empower your community to measure up to being able to participate, they call this community participation. I'm sure that you heard that terminology before, community participation. But to be able to participate as a community, you have to be convinced about what's going on. You have to trust the institution that you are going to participate with. So it's a long process until we end up with community participation. But this is not the end. Because we are usually ambitious enough, enough that we want the community to be full partner 
full partner with the university. And we even call this internationally university community partnership. Have you heard this terminology before? Partnership with the community. University, but to measure up, to be a partner, you have to go through all these letters and we have a lot of duties with the community to prepare them to be able to be a partner in this. How we do this? We have something called the taxonomy of community-based education. Community-based education is about three main things. Service, research, training. What you ex uh, expect in the developing countries um, that the institutions focus on more if they adopt community-based education? The service or research or training? Services. Service. Why service? Because the people usually are deprived from the governmental health services. And when they see an institution coming to them, offering help. So the first thing they usually expect from you is to offer them health services. So usually uh, 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 the institutions from the developing countries focus more uh, on service. What about the developing countries? Research, excellent, excellent. Excellent, bravo alaikum. But in training, of course, both will focus on that. So, as you see, developing countries focus more on the service component, the developing countries focus more on the research component, both then uh, focus on the training component. As much as you do all that right in the community, not just you go to the primary health care units of the Ministry of Health and you do it. This is the first level. But the more difficult and more beneficial to the students is to do that right in the community. And when we say the community, because something that uh, the, the product of community-based education, they call it sometimes uh, the uh, barefooted doctors. No. Because they, they think they focus only on the local community health needs and the priority problems. This is true. Because if we don't consider our own problems, health problems and needs over what's outside our scope, this is terribly wrong. We have to focus first on our own needs, and then there is something called national community, and then the international community or global community. So, being community-based doesn't uh, mean that we focus only on the local community. Yes, we give them a priority, but we are concerned also with the national and global communities. Where about the where this could be done in the primary health care units in the secondary care and tertiary care because tertiary care is also part of community-based education something that when we uh, adopt community-based education we just train our students on primary health care units, and this is wrong we give more emphasis to primary health care unit this is right but also to secondary health care and tertiary health care as well. School health, community field projects, occupational health. We take the students to uh, the, the factories and to uh, the areas where we expect occupational uh, health hazards uh, that may happen. Family visits, we send our students to the families to witness by their own eyes uh, uh, the, the health of the family, not necessarily the disease that they may <coughs> environmental hazards and so on. About the when, 
the when. You can't just send your students once per year and say you are a community-based school. At least from 25% to 50% of the time of the students' training should be happening in right in the field, within the community. In student assessment, uh, we add to the regular ways of student assessment, the self, peer, and group assessment will also happen in problem-based learning. By the way, community leaders and, and family leaders feedback. We take feed, feedback from the community informal leaders. Uh, supervisory checklists, group and individual reporting. Portfolios, you heard a lot about portfolios. Students should write regularly portfolios and reflect on their own training and study. Feed the project evaluation with community representative uh, attendance and modify this question. And thank you very much.